Um, up next, we have Justine on online fan communities as secular religion. talking about fan culture, which includes fan fiction, fan art, and other cultic activities. Um, by fan fiction, I mean um, fans creating their own stories or art or that sort of thing with pre-existing series. Here you see Kenny transformed into Manga Angel Kenny, um, and I'm going to argue that um, fans do this because they get from fandoms what most people got from religion or mythology in the past. I mean this in that, like with religion and mythology, fans are able to um, tap into basic narratives that are important to humans and also um, relate to communities of like-minded people. This is an example of um, fan fiction that relates to these deep dark urges that may not emerge in the original series, but that some fans apparently think that Harry and Voldemort just want to hate fuck each other. Um, so a lot of people say that the first fan community was the Trekkies or Star Trek fans, but um, in my opinion, um, fans actually go a lot farther back, all the way to mythology and early religions, when people just wanted to hear a little bit more about their favorite god, like you know, wanted more Athena stories, and with oral tradition, they're able to create more, and that became part of the mythology. I'm interested in this because I think you can learn a lot about a society by looking at its margins. And this goes for high school cliques like you see in Mean Girls. This goes for Japanese subcultures where people dress up really weirdly. Other marginalized groups, and especially now with the internet, online communities, whether they be Chinese microbloggers or fan fiction writers. I think the internet increasingly, it allows these groups to express things that they may not be comfortable expressing offline. And especially for fan fiction writers, this includes some rather taboo subjects, a lot of which pertain to sex. And that leads me to my next point, which is that, yeah, a lot of fan fiction is about sex and that can make it seem a little bit trashy. Here you have um, Lord of the Rings, Aragorn and Legolas, that to share a smooch. Um, but along with maybe making it a little bit smutty, it's also a way of, especially adolescents who are just becoming comfortable with sexual issues, to express these feelings in ways that are not necessarily um, too directly related to them but rather with um, fictional or real characters. Um, yeah, they, this can be done in a serious manner or more lightheartedly. So on the other hand, like I've said, sometimes this leads to less ideal results. In my opinion, Fifty Shades of Grey, which um, as some of you may know, is based on a fanfic of Twilight, is not the greatest literature, but then again, arguably, if it comes from Twilight, it probably was not going to meet such a high standard. Um, on the other hand, there a lot of people think there's some good fan fiction out there. One of the examples people point to is Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality, written by an artificial intelligence researcher. It sets Harry in an alternate universe where his aunt Petunia is married to a scientist. And Harry has a lot of trouble dealing with the irrational science, um, or wizarding world, rather. There are academics who study fandoms and fan fiction. One of them is Henry Jenkins, former MIT professor, who looks at franchises and argues that even if they are um, on the company's side for commercial reasons, they're a way of allowing fans to participate actively in a fan community and in a developing narrative. But despite academics like Henry Jenkins, a lot of people think that fan fiction is um, not really worthwhile because it's just ripping off other people's ideas. But Joseph Campbell, a comparative myth mythologist, talks about how actually all narratives are kind of ripping off each other because there's just a few fundamental stories that have been repeated throughout mythology and history, religion, and now fan culture. Another positive aspect of um, fans ripping off other people's ideas is that it means that they're not motivated by worldly ambitions like money or fame because um, they can't publish their work and it's anonymous. So really it's just what they're motivated by is true devotion to something, and a devotion of a kind that you rarely see outside of religion. And you also see this devotion in people doing these kind of meditative, photorealistic, basically copies of characters you see like um, Katniss in the Hunger Games there. And you also see this devotion in people waiting forever in lines, kind of like on pilgrimages to see movie premieres. 
all these activities suggest a certain type of cultishness among fans. And I think it's really telling that um, in fan culture, um, people refer to cult followings, and that pretty explicitly draws it back to early religious movements where there, say, the cult of Isis, and then there's the cult of Star Wars, and they each have their rituals, both of which may have to do with sex again. Um, another um, parallel is that a lot of fans treat the characters of the series they're fans of as reincarnatable gods. They have, um, see Kyle here, um, he's turned into a female, turned into an animal, just like ancient Egyptian gods had human and animal forms. But there is a limit to the fluidity that fans um, allow themselves. There's a, there are written traditions in fandom, there's kind of a fan orthodoxy, and one of fans' favorite things to do to each other online often is to call another fanfic's representation of characters OOC, or out of character, which is basically like an accusation of heresy. These divisions lead to factions within fandom. The website tvtropes.org is kind of like the fan bible, and I think some of these names for different types of fans speak for themselves. The purist and old-timer love to point out how other people's representations are out of character. The hipster fan, you know, liked whatever before it was cool, and so on. So why do people get so wrapped up in these ideas and spend all this time and energy on fan fiction? I think it's because, as I've been suggesting, these impulses have been constant through human history and people still really, if, they, if the story catches something in them, they want to continue it in any way they can. And if that means they need to create more of their own world, then they'll do it. Um, the final thing I conclude with is that this sometimes means that the original creators of a series will actually listen to fans Sometimes that's just as simple as playing up a romance or a suggested romance, and maybe that again hints of commercialism. But it's also a way that fans can get back to this um, really basic way of having a democratic participation in modern myths. Thank you. Questions on fandom and secular religion? Can't see you guys out there. Caller, if you have a question. Do you participate in any of these communities? I do not actively write fan fiction. I've considered it. I have something that could be fan based or based on my own characters that I've been considering posting to fanfiction.net. But so far, I've been more of a passive participant. I've read a lot of fan fiction, looked at a lot of fan art. I find it really sociologically interesting. Maybe someday I'll participate. Yes? What's your favorite one you've read so far? What's your favorite one that you've read so far? Um, I think maybe is seen by the fact that I've used um, South Park like two or three times. I think there's something really poignant about teenagers who are going through a lot of teenage angst transforming these little you know, snowball-shaped people into these, like, kind of gangly teenagers who clearly reflect issues that they're having. So there's um, quite a few stories on fanfiction.net about South Park that I've enjoyed. Chris? Well, I like religion type. I like a big element of practice, like the way you live your life. Is there, have, have, have there been cases of sort of fan groups really sort of changing the way they actually live? Based on um, So the question was, a lot of religions have practice as a major way of or living their life, and are there fans who practice their fandom in their lives? Yeah, um, I think one example was people, um, like I was talking about with the Katniss Hunger Games example, doing this really intense and time-consuming art, which is kind of makes me think of circumambulation or other religious art where um, it's sort of the activity of doing the art rather than the final product that is important. There's also, um, there are yearly types of rituals like Comic Con where um, a bunch of geeks get together and act crazy. Um, I guess on a more routine level, there is the idea that people are just constantly producing this stuff and it becomes very integrated into um, what they're thinking about and who they are. Have you seen trends in society based on the kinds of fan communities that emerge? Do you have any thoughts on that? Like based on people being attracted to Twilight or South Park, or what does that say about our society as a whole? Well, um, 
I guess I, as I've sort of been saying, I think it shows that we have a need for narratives that um, a lot of established religions at some point abandon their narratives. Um, like early Christianity was all about the parallel parables, and more recently it's more been about practice and um, orthodoxy. And I think, um, I guess, pretty broadly, fan culture brings back the narrative into um, into culture. Um, I mentioned Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, I think that um, I have a lot of problems with it because I think it pretends to be kinky and subversive, but really just kind of um, supports some pretty standard social norms that I don't necessarily agree with. But I think um, the fact that it's been so popular does show um, the obvious thing that people have said that um, even soccer moms want some smut. But also that a lot of people still, um, or I mean, I'm certainly not going to judge because I've been talking about how great it is that fan fiction allows fans to express themselves. But um, I think Twilight starts out with um, a pretty helpless female character, and um, Fifty Shades of Grey continues with that same kind of female character who needs to be rescued by a strong male. Yes, one over there. Are fans, do fans cycle from one god to another? Are they, are they, are they polytheistic? That's an interesting question because there are some fans who are very into adhering to one um, fictional world and one author or one creator's world. There are others who are really into crossover, which is the official name for um, when different characters are combined into one story, like. Harry Potter encounters Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, and this also, my first slide, Super Smash Brothers was a video game version of Crossover, although within, as my understanding has it, um, the Nintendo world, but I don't really do video games. Okay, thank you very much, Justine. Thank you.